Good morning. Good morning. This is Galen Bingham, the leadership strategist, and I want to welcome you to the Think and Grow Rich show. Uh, this is where we get together with like-minded people and we talk about the 13 principles from Napoleon Hill's classic work, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, you know, this, this book was written like in 1937, but it's the foundation of all of the books, uh, all of the self-help philosophies, uh, all of the success formulas that you hear today. And, and that's why we, we always get excited when we have an opportunity to not only get together with one another to talk about this book, uh, but uh, hear uh, from other people, uh, other amazing people to hear how this book is foundational to the work that they, uh, that they do in uh, their lives. And today is no exception. Uh, I've got some amazing co-hosts with me. You're going to hear from Ursula Odom, who is the founder of uh, Sula 2 Publishing. Uh, you're going to hear from Dr. Peter James, who is like the mindset guru. This, this dude is like amazing. Uh, I get to hang out with him quite frequently. And then you're also going to get to hear uh, from uh, Ms. Ann McNeil, who is the mastermind behind this mastermind. But more important, and I'm really excited about this, uh, we've got a guest today who is, I'm, I'm just really excited. I mean, the energy that I get from her is just over the top. And this has nothing to do with the fact that she lives and is native from one of my favorite cities in the whole wide world, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, so I'm just going to get it. Let's just get into the conversation. Uh, so Valencia Warren Gibbs uh, is a native Detroiter uh, and she's an entrepreneur. She owns her own accounting firm uh, where she oversees her family's music production company. Uh, she advocates for social justice for the voiceless. Uh, her vision is to encourage people to succeed despite life's obstacles. Uh, and she refers to this book uh, as the instructional roadmap to change the mindset. Uh, so she uses these principles to motivate, inspire, and educate people in her weekly talk show called Level Up uh, on My Turn Radio. Uh, which uh, can be heard uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. Uh, she, um, you know, even in our conversation so far, uh, I sense her honest, engaging uh, way of communicating. Uh, she challenges people to shift their mindset towards building generational wealth and develop self-confidence to go after their dreams. All the things that I love to love to hear myself. So Valencia, welcome to the conversation. I'd like to just go ahead and let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and why this book has become not only part of what you do personally uh, to to uh, maximize your personal success, but it just it feels like and sounds like you've built an entire professional platform around sharing these pra uh, these uh, principles with folks that you come in contact with. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, but first, who, who tell us about yourself? <laughs> Well, thank you, Galen, and to, to the panelists. I love the fact that um, Think and Grow Rich has just been a part of who I am, or will it not until in the last, I want to say just 18 months that I really got an opportunity to dive in into the things of um, int being introduced, uh, reintroduced to it. It's always been on my shelf, and it was the irony behind it is that um, my fa I come from a father, well, parents, and my dad was a a serial entrepreneur. So he was into everything. He did music and he finally settled on towing. And since I, I, I my dad always said that I was just different. So I would always just sit, I would sit there. He made me, he made me the secretary and the accountant. I had no idea what I was doing. So while everyone was out having holidays and Memorial Days and 4th of July, I was in the basement with my dad doing accounting work. And it was like, my life was passing me by. Of course I was 18, but <laughs> I wanted to get involved and be out with my friends. But I started learning how to get involved with business with my dad by watching him. But when I was in the seventh grade, I received, we, they did a test about careers. 
And well, of course I'm a Detroit native. So it was a lot of things going on at the time. And they did a, uh, it was a test about what, what would you be when you're growing up and, or as an adult, your career. And mine turned out to be an entrepreneur, but it said business owner, but I didn't know what that really meant. I just knew ever since I was a little kid that that's what I was going to do. I saw myself with the suit, my aunt had sent me a suit and I wore that suit to school. Now I was like, and let me mind you in the first grade, the, I'm sure the suit was extra large on me, but my mom was, she, she left before I could get up in the morning. So I wore it and I always envisioned myself with a briefcase because that was the image that was portrayed at the time. So clearly this was a time ago. And I, so what happened is as I began to evolve, I watched my dad and he was in and out of things. So it gave me an opportunity to get a, 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 an understanding of accounting. I literally hated accounting after dealing with my dad. I was like, I don't know what the credit's in the debits. No, if it's a credit, it's gotta be a debit. So as time went on, I picked up my first job just because I knew accounting. I couldn't get a job at McDonald's. I couldn't get a job anywhere, but I got a job as an account as an accounting clerk with a health system. And I was so excited. And it was then I knew, but I should have been more attentive to it, but I wasn't, not even remotely close. I was just all always trying to find something new. I knew that I would have a business, but I'm still learning how to get that done and how to actually make that happen. And it's still evolving. And again, it hasn't been since the last 18 months when I met Miss Ann at a NABWIC meeting. And although I've had Think and Grow Rich ever since the mid nineties, for the, the irony was when the last two, it was just prior to my Think and Grow Rich kept flying off the shelf. My son kept stealing my Think and Grow Rich. So I got another copy. Then I was like, okay, then I got him a copy. Then he bought me a copy. And then it was like, he couldn't find it. I was giving the copies away. Oh, I have three copies. Now, you, you know, I would give it to, to people. And this was literally, and it was like, it was talking to me then. And I had read it and I just really never understood the mastermind. And I didn't know once you start raising the frequency and you really start to search for things, it starts searching for you. Mm. So once I really got entrenched in it in the last year, got a mastermind group. The, uh, I mean, my life has just really evolved and it's, and it's still, and I'm now I'm in the clarity mastermind. And so it, I'm still trying to figure things out, but what I love about it is that I'm making money while I do it, mm. but not just making money means anything. It is really trying to hone into who I am as a mother, as a daughter, as an, as an aunt and people that look up to me. And those are the people that are in my family. Was that enough or not enough? Oh so, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, right now, I'm still kind of frozen on, you said when you start searching for things, those things start searching for you. Please tell me more about that. Well, what do you, what do you mean by that? I was, well, and well, that was one thing I said, I was telling Miss Ann, I was like, I don't know what it is. She says your frequency. She said, when you start looking for things, things will start looking for you. And I didn't know why they were appearing because in the, I was like, I, I know I needed these things. And that weekend making the decision, I was really looking to change my life. I needed something more concrete, something I needed. I needed something. I had all of this information, this skill. And I was just in a place where I wanted, it was, I have to put something together. I don't want to live the next on eons or trying to figure anything out. I literally that weekend was was uh, was going to Florida. And that was my, I was going to Florida to go visit a friend and something said, no, I received an invitation to go to a meeting. And that changed my life because I was looking for something and what showed up was Miss Ann in mm -hmm. red. And I was like, this lady came and sat next down and literally started talking to me. I was like, I don't even know who she is, but I, the energy in the room with all of this red was so powerful. I knew I had hit the jackpot. My mother's favorite color was red. And I felt like Miss Ann was the replacement my mother sent in answering my questions. Mm -hmm. I believe our ancestors speak to us. 
And my mother knew I was heavy into understanding the spiritual realm of knowing what I am and that vibration is there. And I didn't know what that was until Ms. Ann made it clear to me, that's what that information is, is vibration. So that's when you go seeking for something, when you start to level up, and that's why I call my show Level Up. When you start to level up, that there's, there's, there's different levels in which they say water seeks its, um, seeks its own level. I actually know what that means. When you're seeking, it is going to meet you wherever you are. Mm. And the more and more you seek and the more you push forward, and this is what I tell my audience on Level Up Radio, is that it comes, and I use the Think and Grow Rich principles. I have to, because I, can, I would be remiss if I didn't, I would be, I would be dishonest to myself. This book was actually looking for me as it, as it was leaving the house and it kept coming back. It need, I needed to pay more attention to it. And I've had this book in my library for over 20 years. And I was like, and, and every time I read it or when I did read it, one time I didn't even finish it. Then I started again and didn't finish it. And I was like, why can't I get through this book? But the mastermind has helped me to take one chapter at a mm. time. And it's not overwhelming but did i get that one (laughs) i'm so excited you have no idea even the frequency to be here that yes it i was looking for something having a radio show being able to listen to radio talk radio has been my life i've loved it because that's where i've got my dad would literally turn on talk radio and have the tv on have the tv off and have us compare what we're hearing to what we're seeing yeah, yeah. Well, hey, there, there's something on page 220 of this version of the book uh, where it says creative imagination is the mechanism by which intuition and hunches seem to spring out of thin air and by which two or more people working closely together in a state of intense concentration and focus seem to anticipate each other's thoughts, actions, insights, and even actual words uh, I know that's happened to me, and um, it actually happened to me with Miss Ann. But give me some examples of where that's happened to you, because that's really kind of the cornerstone of how this brain thing works. Well, I can say that happens a lot in my mastermind group, and that happens so often in my mastermind group, because the it's like they they know when when I put an idea out there in the. And what that's the best part of the brain. And it, the, the receptor, it's like the conduit that puts everybody together, the subconscious mm-hmm. and the creativity. And I was like, okay, so, but I've, I've always drawn. So those things have, so when I'm with people, I can, I can actually feed off of them. Especially, I love intimate gatherings. And with my mastermind group, they'll know, it's almost like when we're reading they will go to right to the to that one the that one paragraph in the book that was that aha and, and you'll laugh because that was mine. <laughs> it was like and then we can but we bounce off of each other. Oh Valencia, try this. And we're there to encourage each other, not just encourage though. We have we they've given me ideas that only they that that frequency, that vibration can generate in that creative in that creative space because at that moment we are vibing on the energy of each other so it's like the and literally we are like i'm in michigan two of us are in michigan the other our other part of the group is in florida you could not ever think that we are that far apart but they get it i get a i'll get a i'll get a text i'll get something in that they're in i was like i was just thinking of you And that is so amazing. That's where the creativity and that's where the vibration, I believe, when two or more are gathered, God says it. I love this book because it's all biblically based in the in the principles instruction. It's completely amazing. And everything that you just said when it turns when that when it comes to that that paragraph, that's where I get my creativity from. And I'm able to help others with my thoughts, with their thoughts. And then we're able to verbalize it and be able to speak to what it is that is needed at the moment. And I say that's nothing but infinite intelligence. Fantastic, fantastic. You know, I, I, I could have this conversation with you one-on-one 
um, for years, I think. Uh, before we start talking about my favorite Detroit restaurants, uh, I'm going to I'm going to go to uh, uh, Miss Ursula Odom uh, and Ursula come into the conversation. Share a little bit about yourself because I did your bio a little dis disservice. Uh, but um, let's talk about uh, how this chapter, how this topic fits into that overall philosophy. And uh, and then I'll let you just kind of take it take over with Valencia. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I am Ursula Odom, and I'm the CEO of Sula Two, and we make old, new, and everything we do. In that, we capture, preserve, and present legacy legacy information. And um, to that end, we will create books, videos, and legacy walls. So I love the story, and that's why today is just so special because we have a person that loves telling her story. So I'm just in hug heaven. Um, now, as for the rest of you that are new and are wondering what the heck are they talking about? The book and the principles that are shared from that book are things that you probably need to hear. So we're gonna share that with you. And those of you that think you know every last one, I promise you every time you hear it, you'll think of something different. So we're about to share with you the principles of thinking grow rich. Number one is desire. Napoleon Hill said that everything starts with a burning desire, a compelling reason for doing what it is we do. Step two is faith, having belief in our ability to attain that which we desire. Step three is what we call auto-suggestion. Auto-suggestion simply means being very intentional about the things that we are pouring into our thoughts, into our brains, and into our consciousness. Our brains, our minds will receive everything automatically but we have to work extra hard to make sure that the positive things are what we are feeding ourselves because those positive thoughts are going to turn into positive actions. Step number four is specialized knowledge. No one person knows everything, even about whatever their particular area of expertise might be. And the value of the mastermind principle is using the specialized knowledge of other people. Step number five is imagination the workshop of the mind. Everything starts with our imagination and our thoughts, the burning desire to transform those thoughts into our reality. In order to do that, we have to take a look at step six, which is organized planning. That is how we crystallize our desire into action, organizing ourselves. Having the thought and not acting on the thought isn't gonna get us anywhere. We have the thought, we go through the organized planning to transform that thought into action. Step number seven is decision. What Napoleon Hill said is the mastery of procrastination. Napoleon Hill said that the antidote to procrastination is simply to make a decision and then move on that decision. Step eight is persistence. We have to have a sustained effort which is induced by our faith in order to achieve our goals. One of Napoleon Hill's books I love, even the title, Three Feet from Gold. Those people who became rich during the gold rush in the wild, wild west days didn't do that because they were necessarily smarter or had better information than anyone else. It's because they stayed just a little bit longer. Sometimes people left when they were just literally three feet from gold. So hanging in there, being persistent, is step number eight. Step number nine, the power of the mastermind, the driving force. None of us can accomplish anything on our own. Everybody, I don't care who you are, from the most prominent person to the person who might be considered the lowest on the totem pole, everybody has someone who helped them get to where they are. And the power of the mastermind is being able to use those influences around us. Use the thoughts, use the knowledge, use the exploration of other people to help us in achieving our goal. Step number 10, the mystery of sex transmutation. 
This title can be a little confusing, but essentially what the mystery of sex transmutation means is that we oftentimes in our society think of sex as being purely physical. It is absolutely physical, but what Napoleon Hill teaches us is that sex also has an emotional element and that sex is the strongest of our desires. That if we can take our sexual energy, transform that into positive, creative influences, it can propel us to new heights. And so we spend quite a bit of time talking about the mystery of step 10, which is sex transmutation. Step number 11 is the subconscious mind, which Napoleon Hill tells us is the connecting leap between our human mind and the infinite intelligence, the source of all thought, the source of all creativity. Conscious mind, we spend some time talking about how we use that through the influence of auto-suggestion and what we're feeding into our mind. Step number 12, which is the brain, the broadcasting and receiving station of thought. Final step number 13, the sixth sense, the door to the temple of wisdom. This is the final step through which infinite intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort from or demands by the individual. The principle is the apex of the philosophy. It can be assimilated, understood, and applied only by first mastering the other 12 principles. Okay, so now you have it. And if you don't have the book, go get it. In fact, I think there's a link to it in the chat. Now, since we are talking about the brain this week, Galen, heads up, I have two questions. Go for it. Uh, Break some rules. <laughs> Valencia, good morning. You've been delightful so far, so I'm excited about hearing what you have to say. Now, when you talk about the brain, how do you relate the brain to your desire and subconscious? You know, the interesting part of that, and you say that about the brain, I actually had to, I, I picked up the eighth habit by Stephen Covey that kind of supports this chapter in such a way, because you know, that's how all the, you know, most things actually happen. I, the brain, I, to me, when I was reading the, when, that, that was that moment when I understood, well, when they did, when they, when they, it's always, you, you'll hear brain dead and, or it's, and I'm like, what does that really mean? There's no activity. That means we are, we're emotionless. So without emotion, when I read that, it said without, you have to have emotion and the things that transmit through it. So it's like the holding, it's like the holding space. That's why it's, I, now I understand what actually does not happen or cannot happen without the brain being intact or at least in a healthier state so that we can differentiate and be able to, that's the best thing about it. We can differentiate, and, but we can also shift it. The, the, the stimuli that we actually experience in making our decisions is based upon the fact that we have these other experiences that we try to counter and I'm no professional at this, but when I was reading it, I was that made so much more sense. And now, and I, now I understand why it, it's situated between subconscious and the sixth sense to really understand that this is the cavity that holds everything together. This is where everything begins to now to to rearrange, and it, so therefore to well, tra train our um, to do a train of thought, but we can rearrange it. And it, since it's one of the most powerful, it is the most powerful muscle in our, in, our, in our body, that we can now exercise it to do different things by just changing the way that we think about things, the way we see things, our habits. And it all begins there. Was that, was, did that kind of give you a good idea? When Absolutely. You and it's a great segue to that second question that I wanted to ask. Before the show, Anne was surprised that you had not been on the show before because apparently you've interacted with, with her over a period of time based on both of your, your, your statements and that you watched the show or have been listening to the show for quite some time. So that's a commitment every Saturday morning. Why in the heck would you do that? I, that's how I start my, that's, to me, that's how I start my week. <laughs> my week starts on Saturday morning because it sets the tone, the information. I don't like it when I when I would miss a show 
or oversleep because I was up with the grand, with my grandbabies. And I was like, no, that cannot happen. So I had to explain to my son, I have to be in bed at a certain time because I have to get up so I can be prepared for my show. That starts my day. I learned so much from this, from this, from this platform. I will, I, it's like things you never thought about. Last week was sleep. And I was like, that is gold. That was golden because to sleep, my, it, the brain and how we react to things, how slow we are. When I was younger, I could do 24 hours, no sleep. I could go and do my papers, get things in. But this was, it's, it was, it's like, I can't start my day without, I cannot start a Saturday without it. I'm sorry. That's just the way I am now. It's a habit. It's part of how I've conditioned myself to think. <laughs> so oh, that's wonderful. And when you mention about um, the sleep, that was changing, life changing for me too, for a number of reasons. And when she said that it, your brain is like a battery, that when, when it goes down, then everything else kind of shuts off. I mean, that was the best analogy you could have, you know? So yes. yeah, I get your point. Thank you very much. Okay, so now I've heard you say mindset like five or six different times. And we've got our own resident mindset master, Dr. Peter James. I, I, you know, I, I see you twitching in your seat, Dr. James. Come on, get in here. Get in lots, here. Lots Tell of the audience going a little bit here, about yourself, about lot, yourself lot. first. Okay, all right. But lots of twitching going on because, you know, Valencia is saying all the right things for sure. And um, I'm very excited about how she has adopted all of the, this Napoleon Hills think and grow rich philosophy into her life. My name is Dr. Peter A. James. I am the high performance coach, helping you to shift your mindset in your business and or your career. And, you know, you've said so much stuff, Valencia. Thank you so much for, first of all, for joining us today. And I'm thinking about this chapter of the brain and even the previous chapter uh, of subconscious, I'm thinking about your mastermind. And it sounds like that you have been able to step into this book from a principal's perspective, but also allowing it to affect your brain and your subconscious. When I was younger, I didn't really believe in this self-help stuff. I didn't believe in Napoleon Hill, um, Aunt Tony Robbins, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was like, you know, these kooks, who are they? They're walking on fire and all this type of stuff, right? Um, as I've gotten older, I've realized you really have to kind of manage how you think, for lack of a better word, right? For lack of um, expounding on that. So now how have you been able to really step into this to shift your mindset so that you're thinking along these lines and how has it ultimately affected you professionally and personally? Oh, that is such a wonderful question. <laughs> I love that question. Thank you very much. You can come back every week, actually. Please do come back. <laughs> <laughs> that is a one because I'm constantly working on that. Yeah. But now that I recite the self-confidence formula, thanks to the Clarity Mastermind, it's, and I literally recite it every day, at least once, at least once. And when I am, when I'm faced with a challenge, something that feels very uncomfortable, I can find something in that formula that gets me through it. And one of my favorite is, is that, that is not dealing with any transaction that does not benefit all of whom it affects. I am such, that is so important to me because that's my integrity. That's my honesty. So, and then when things feel uncomfortable, I've been in situations where I'm not happy at all with the current, with, with how the environment is going. I'm able to now assess where I stand. But I'm very, I'm now trying to understand, this is what I don't do because I make sure I keep copies of Think and Grow Rich around my house. Because when you come to my household, I want you to feel, want to, when you say something, I want to give you this book. So this, this begins your journey. And that everything, every day is not perfect, but I learned here, everything always working, um, everything is always working out for my good, no matter what. I keep that because that is the same as Romans 8, 28. So it, for me, and I keep that in my mind because of that, that is so important to me. And I recite that form. There's something in that formula that's pertaining to that current situation that I must now 
when I don't feel like I've done enough or I don't have enough. I will eliminate hatred, envy, jealousy, and selfishness and cynicism. And I must, I stay on cynicism for this particular reason. I do not want to, I can't criticize someone else because that is only speaking to them, making th their weakness more powerful and making me and, and disempowering me. So I, I, I do a lot of listening where I used to do a lot of mm. talking. This is the most y'all gonna get out of me. So, but I, I, but I'm so passionate and I have to kind of watch myself because I'll get really emotionally involved in something that I believe, listen, all you have to do is just listen. And that's where this, this it, I apply the principles because that reinforces things that I'm still build, working on, which is my self-confidence. And that is critical because I'm, some people may look at me and, or get my energy and like, oh, she's got it together. I'm working on this just like you are. Here's, here, take this book. And I got that from Miss Ann. So that's why I keep the copies now. So I give people the copies. <laughs> Before we pass it back to Galen really quick, uh, you mentioned masterminds, you mentioned affirmations multiple times. I'm excited about that for sure, but especially for our audience who may have not dove into that area of their lives, whether it's the masterminds or whether it's the affirmations. Talk to us a little bit more about why that helps you in those down times and those dark times when you have self-doubt, when you have fear, when you have negativity, the affirmations of those masterminds, definitely really, really quick. And I'm sorry to ask that second question there, Galen. Go ahead. Well, remember the brain. Yeah. The brain. And I have to keep it going. And I have to reinforce those positives because it's the receiver and, and it's the transmitter. So I have to, so I have to make sure what's coming in my mind it's those downtimes. I have to put something positive. And I learned that through this to consistently do it. It was like I said positive things to me. I can do it. I can do it. And I go and I revert back to where I've had the greatest challenges, but the greatest successes were under my challenges, not from things that just happened great. It were the things that happened to me that were not so great. Oh, you want you want mute on us real quick. It was the things that happened to me that were not so great. Yeah. And the and th that I learned to then reinforce it's the brain. I have to keep feeding it something good, mm -hmm. and I and I learned that through this. This was I'm, when I'm telling you life changing. I haven't even begun. I'm just getting my feet wet. I have a next year. I have my mind set on my legacy. To, I, I, I've already. I there's not. I'm preparing now. So it is telling my mind what I'm going to do. I'm telling it now. I'm putting in it things that I need to, feeding it positive words because I'm going to respond to it later. Some way, some form, somehow. It's going to manifest itself in something I do say or someone that I meet. So I am consistently giving myself affirmations, critical, most important, especially in the mornings. Good stuff. Great stuff. Good stuff, Galen. I don't... I don't even know where to start or stop with Valencia here. We could go all day with this. So, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, first of all, you know, audience, you, you guys see that energy that I was talking about at the beginning. I mean, this, I only had like 10 minutes of this before this conversation. I'm like, okay, y'all aren't ready. You're really not ready. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk about just kind of as a, as a, as a co-host cohort is that, um, the best guests, the best conversations uh, are those people that you can tell they didn't just read the book like a month ago, right? That they're living the principles, that this, this book has become part of their DNA, has, been, has become part of their language and the way that they think. Uh, so, Anne, you, you, you've been on this journey a lot longer than any of us on the show right now. What do you think about, what do you think of Valencia? First, share with the group who you are and everyone references you. Give everyone a little bit about your background. And then what do you think about how Valencia is living these principles and specifically how she's letting this affect and infect her brain as she goes about trying to achieve her success? Wow, wow, Galen, I'm feeling like all of the other co-hosts in that um, 
first of all, my name is Ann McMillan. I am, yes, I am. <laughs> the master wealth builder, utilizing these principles to help entrepreneurial women and some men to get greater clarity in their highest income producing areas of their business and their life. And Valencia, I tip my hat if I were wearing one to you because you are the epitome of an example of allowing this book and these principles to read you as you continue to read this book. Because I literally could sit here like our co-host and say absolutely nothing because not only are you in the brain principle, but you're also walking through all of the other principles and connecting the desire, the faith, the imagination, the auto-suggestion. Now you're specializing your knowledge and the mastermind principle, your organized plans. I mean, you're using all of these principles as you connect them and show us what does it look like? That's, that's what you're doing for me. And, you know, uh, we talked a little earlier about um, Galen told us, I forget the word he used when he told us to go get ready. And Ursula said, oh, I never knew. What, what's her name? <laughs> what's her, what, what was her name, um, Galen? He, told us? he said that we needed to get all gussy up. And I said, oh, gussy, gussy. <laughs> and, and Ursula said, I didn't know she was a real person, but you are a real person in exemplifying what these principles look like in real life. And I, my question really to you is, what does the next chapter look like for you when you think about your business and your life and how you're using these principles? And the reason I ask this question is because we both are in a number of organizations together. And I'm just curious and this was, you know, a, a question I'm thinking about as I'm sitting here listening to you, because you have no place else to go but up, right? So what does the next level look like for you in terms of, if you can share with us, how will you use your brain and connecting with other brains as we've heard as a broadcasting and receiving station for thought, your thoughts. So what does that look like for you, the next level up? Miss Ann, you know you love to challenge people. Yeah. <laughs> and for the next level, what, what it looks like for me is having more clarity and being able to move forward and step forward into my destiny, my purpose, narrowing down. And you help me do that by uh, identifying specifically what I'm great at. And I say it every day. I am an expert cost accountant. That is my, and, and, and because of that, I'm able, and I, I now see that other people respect that and they understand what that looks like because I couldn't say that before. And to have that type of clarity, I'm my accounting firm will do great things for other businesses to help them grow because I am, am now have clarity and where I can help them in their business. So uh, helping my goal is to help a million businesses. Realistically, how does that really look? I'll probably hit a, a good 50 to 100,000 of them so that they can now realize what their potential is in their financial commitment to their organization, to themselves, what look like and being able to help them put that strategically on paper and also live it in their activity, their operations and their vision for their businesses. That's what my future looks like for me to be able to give those individuals that I couldn't say that before I started Clarity Mastermind. I had no idea. I just was all over the place. She was like, okay, you gotta pick one. <laughs> and I was like, I love it. I love it. So yes, right. yes, all and right. being able to do that. So what you just did for me in making that statement is you just challenged me because I never talk about my Clarity Mastermind as a part of this show. And I now see that I am doing a disservice to others by not sharing. So we'll put the link inside of the chat, Laverne, if you can help me with that. And we'll also put it on the Facebook group. But I, I, really, uh, um, I really have high respect for you. And I really, along with all of us, 
we want to thank you for joining us every Saturday as a part of this show because it's like you and Catherine and a lot of other people that's on here right now so I can't call everybody's name so please forgive me but she's on the show and I want to just make sure you know how much we really appreciate just like you look forward to seeing us we really look forward to seeing all of you as a part of our family as we come on and actually Galen uh, and, and our co-host we talked about this a few weeks ago and we talked about the fact that we now have a tribe of people following us every single Saturday. And so we are becoming family as we all collectively walk through these principles. That's why we want to continue to encourage all of our listeners, whether you're on the radio, on Blog Talk, or whether you're on Facebook Live as we stream live, or whether you're in the Zoom room with us, please let us hear from you with your questions and comments so we can just make sure that you are part of the show. And just like Valencia, and if you're interested in being on the show, let us know and we would gladly give you an invitation, but, but I'll take it back, send it back to you, Galen. And Valencia, thank you and welcome for being a part of this show today. Thank you, Ms. Ann. Thank you. Hey, so Valencia, I'm curious, what, what was your um, all-in moment when you just decided that, you know what, I don't know that I understand everything that's in this book, but I'm just going to follow it. Uh, because for me, it was like some specific challenges that I received from a mastermind group that I was in around specific dollar amounts that we had to claim, not necessarily knowing where it was going to come from, but we had to follow the process, follow the formula and just and once I started over delivering against that expectation, against that personal commitment, I was just, again, I don't get it. I don't understand it, but that gummit, I'm going to follow it. Well, did you have a, a an all-in moment? Yes. I had an all-in moment when I first started to, to when, when she gave us the formula. So it was referred specifically to, to the, the self-confidence formula and the formula where you have to just, you know, claim the money. And that was another question I had for her before. Now I, I don't spend so much time on claiming the money. I claim the action of a, a specifically a, a specific achievement that I know will eventually drive the dollar amount. So then now I'll be prepared to set that specific dollar amount. I start I started, I was all in when I was like, oh, and I started to really, I mean, I made it that I would, this was going to be a part of my mantra. So I worked at it every single day. I recited, I literally wrote it in, in on, on my mirror in the, in the morning. So it was kind of funny because we only had this part of the mirror because I'd write it on both sides. So, but, and it stayed there for months and my husband didn't say a word. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he, he was like, not go in the, in the bathroom at night, get up in the morning. I would recite it. I said, oh, I got to get up. I got to go, you know, to recite this before I laid down. And he let me have that. And that was that when that's when I knew I was committed all in that I'm not stopping and I want to help Miss Ann build do what she's done for me for millions of people because they can only benefit. You can only benefit from this. And that's being committed. That's getting up in the morning and making a decision to change your circumstances despite all that's going on around you. It's not dark until you make that, take that last breath. So each morning you have an opportunity to redo this all over again. And today only matters. And that's what I focus on. I was all in when I met Miss Ann and that, on that Saturday in June. <laughs> you should have seen me. I was there. I didn't have any money. I was literally lifting and Ubering. I had no money. And, and they said the membership, they was talking about how I had, I literally went and got a credit card just so that I can get the membership. Hmm. And they, and because my credit was all jacked up, I was like, they gave me one for 300. When that, that card came in the mail, I ran up, literally, I ran upstairs, turned on the computer and went to the website and put my membership on so I could be a part of these women. But they allowed me to participate while I got that together. They didn't know. They said, oh, you'll get your membership. And that was the, that was my all in moment when I knew right then and there. Mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, all right. Well, hey, let, I, I want to circle back to uh, to everyone. So, Ursula, there, there are just so many jewels, so many great points circling here. Uh, what are some of the key ahas that you're taking from this conversation and how can folks get a hold of you? 
if they want to take advantage of some of those legacy walls, some of those reenactment and, 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 and work that you do, how can they get a hold of you? Well, you can go to my website, sulatu.com, S-U-L-A-T-O-O.com. And you can find me on YouTube by searching for Sula Space 2, S-U-L-A Space T-O-O. As for my ahas, um, I heard in several ways, including many ways from Valencia, feeding my mind something positive all the time. That is something that um, controls everything else. Because if you feed it something negative, then the rest is, is toast. But then Anne did something where she started and I realized she was doing it from memory, she was going through the chapters of the book in a statement. I said, that's kind of cool. So I got a little bit disengaged for a minute. And, obvious, and, and what was really funny is that when I looked up and started engaging again, Valencia was talking about exactly what I was doing. And here's what I did. I wrote, and it's got, it's got to be revised. I have, the, I have the desire and the faith to automatically feed my brain positive thoughts. I will use specialized knowledge and imagination to organize and plan my decisions. I will be persistent with transmuting my energies to follow, to follow my dreams with full awareness of my subconscious mind, brain, sixth sense, and their communications. So that is Think and Grow Rich. And I'm going to study that based on today's show. Thank you, Valencia, for motivating all of these things to come together or responding to the infinite, infinite intelligence that's in work today. <laughs> Terrific. D Dr. Peter James, uh, tell everyone how they can get a hold of you. And, and I'm going to challenge you to pick only one or two ahas from this conversation that, that you want to leave everyone with and, and, and highlight. I can't do it, Galen, man. I can't do it. Man. So <laughs> yeah, you can reach me at Dr. Peter A. James. That's at Dr. D-R-P-E-T-E-R-A-J-A-M-E-S on any social media platform or on shiftyourmindset.com. You know, what I love about being a part of this show is that every time we have a new guest in, you know, not only do I, I get fascinated with their stories, but I, 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 I kind of dive into their stories to see what I can extract and learn from. And this, and Valencia, today you were no different. What I took away from you for sure was the fact that you really, again, stepped into Think and Grow Rich, and it allowed you to open your mind up. And as a result of all that, I re reassured myself with some things that allows you to open my mind. This may be some benefit someone who's listening from the be because you're able to open your mind with think and grow rich. You you believe that there is always another level. There is always more opportunity. There is always a different way. There is always another idea and there is always another way to do things. You're not closed-minded to think someone's already got the idea, someone's already got the business. There is always another avenue, and perhaps the affirmations or mastermind may help you to get there for sure. So good stuff. <laughs> well, terrific. Well, Miss Ann McNeil, uh, you know, I, I would just love to have you do a couple things. Number one, uh, everyone that comes on, everyone who comes on talks about the influence that you've had. Uh, over their lives by introducing them to this to this book these principles in a great way uh, so i would love for you to share your contact uh, information with anyone who may be listening or watching who do not have a personal uh, connection with you and then also uh, i i know that uh, we talked a little bit about your clarity mastermind but every year you host an annual meeting where folks can get into this, they can get into a community, they can build their own tribe to understand uh, how they want to live their life on purpose, at least for the next 365 days. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that as well. 
Wow, Galen, every, you know, people can reach me on all the social media. I would definitely ask everyone to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is my goal to work on, on that to make the information more accessible to everybody that we produce. Also, because I focus so highly on the six steps to riches, if anyone is interested in that, you can text me at 55678. 55678. You can text me at 55678 and in, in the comments, just put the word and. Yeah. A N N. Galen, every year we host an annual meeting for your life. But the purpose of hosting that is to encourage all of us to do more than have a New Year's resolution, to do more than have a wish list to do more than have that bucket list, but really to help all of us integrate these principles into a living legacy, not leaving the legacy, but living the legacy that will allow you to identify what's important, to encourage you to create a plan, but come back every year in January to have the tribe hold you accountable for those goals in which you set for your life. And Valencia is an excellent example of what that looks like. She has been phenomenal in helping to pave the way in many of the other organizations that we're in, but so has so many other people. And, and what I want to do, I know we have uh, crisis one, two, three, four, five going on, but we want to encourage everybody. We will be meeting in person. We will take all of the necessary safety precautions, but this is for your life and the life of your family. We read in many of the books um, by Stephen Covey that talks about starting with the end in mind. What if you were, and you are the pilot of a plane and you have a destination that you aspire to achieve? Let's say you're gonna go from wherever you are to LA, right? You get in the plane, you are the pilot, but you do not have a flight plan. The people behind you are your family and they're all expecting you to help them to arrive at that destination. Now the FAA, you know, and the government are all gonna hold you accountable. Well, we are holding you accountable for your family and having that flight plan. So we wanna encourage all of you to join us on January the 8th, that Friday we're having a reception. And that Saturday from eight to about three, we will have our annual meeting for your life. And I intentionally do not call it a conference because a conference has certain connotations, but this is a meeting, just like you are a publicly traded corporation. This is the meeting for your life where you're going to be held accountable for what you say you want to do. So Gail and I, I'm just excited. And if I may, I'd like to go ahead and give my, uh, I'd like to give my uh, aha from, uh, from Valencia. And uh, actually my aha from Valencia came from a story uh, that I read. And for those of you that might remember the story that says that I think it's in the fifties um, that, uh, that there was a monastery in Thailand that um, they revealed that this clay Buddha was being moved from one place to another. And as they were moving the clay Buddha, it cracked. And so they put it down and they decided to repair the crack. But as they prepared to re repair the crack, they saw a light coming out of it. And when they removed the clay, from the Buddha, they found that it was all made of gold. And I, I, I am remembering this story as, as she's talking because Valencia, you're reminding me of that golden Buddha that was surrounded by clay. And the principles and the philosophy of this book has just slowly began to chip away the clay to begin to reveal the gold within. And so on behalf of all of us, I really wanna thank you 
for being persistent and consistent in doing you by staying, oh my gosh, by staying focused on your own desire. So that's my big, 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 big aha is I just take everything you shared with us today. We feel your enthusiasm. We feel your energy. But more importantly, because I've known you for a little while, I can see the growth. And slowly, I see the clay being removed and the gold coming through. So thank you so very much for sharing with us today. Thank you, Ms. Ann. She's like, I, this is the mother I don't want to disappoint. So if I, don't, if, I, if I feel like I'm not doing great, I just stay away. I was just like... <laughs> I was like, I go in my corner and I'm, yeah. Thank you. That is, that, that's an Oprah moment. <laughs> an Oprah moment. There's only one Oprah. I know, but this is an Ann McNeil moment, parallel to the, just the monument success. Well, thank you, I received this woman it. Thank yes. Thank you. So, hey, so Valencia, uh, I'd love to come back to you because I, I, I know whenever I have conversations like this and I'm the focus of the conversation, usually in working out what I want to talk about, um, something registers for me. So how can people get a hold of you uh, if they want to uh, get more of this energy that they're experiencing right now? And then what are there any lasting thoughts or ahas that you'd like to leave the audience with? Oh, yes, most certainly. Uh, well, if you, first, if you like to get in contact with me, it is I can be reached at my um, Valencia at accountingarchitects.com. And that is also, uh, and my, I can, you can email me, uh, you can come out, visit my website. It will take you, give you information too. And, but, so I'm not that brave because I only have one phone number right now. I have an 800 number, which is 888-657-7022 and extension one, two, three, will all come to me. I'm all those people for right now. I'm learning the email to revisit. Uh, re, re, yes, re, yeah. So that, um, but um, my aha moment is you never, my, my grandmother used to always say, you'll never know when you need someone. And and that have always, you, you never know where you'll be when, when someone you'll need. So you always have to have humility. And I treat people, the golden room, the way that I want to be treated. And this whole experience in the last 18 months has taught me it's okay not to engage where there's there's no value but not right now not judging it but I treat people the way that I want to be treated and this clearly is in the best experience that I could have ever had was bringing my life to where it is today and I'm excited about the growth of where I'm going I'm and I was like, I am not, I am like at the quote of Miss Ann, you're not leaving without me. <laughs> I'm like, you are not, look, I will find you. So I, I found my calling and I thank that for this experience. So that's my aha was that you never know, just go and be open to what, what the universe is for you and don't judge it good or bad. There's no such thing. Everything happens for a reason. Well, fantastic. This has been this has been a great conversation. I, I know I'm definitely going to be giving you a call so we can stay connected. Uh, this has been just a, a, an amazing an amazing experience. Uh, and listening to uh, you reminds me of um, uh, one of my uncles uh, passed away about a month and a half ago. And um, so I was reflecting on some experience I had with him, you know, one lived in memphis memphis tennessee another great town and every time i would go through uh, i would get grilling lessons because um, memphis seems to do barbecue a whole lot different than any place else in the world and, and so i would go through and um uh, i guess a couple months ago we I, I was going through memphis and i said hey uncle uh, you know, really, really, you know, let's let's get into some ribs. Let's get into some brisket. You know, show me how to do this thing. And so he said, "Your first, you got, first thing you got to do is you got to build a big fire because you need to create the smoke." So we had this big fire. We created a whole lot of smoke, and we were just grilling and grilling and grilling. And then we um, realized after grilling that we had to go to the store to get something else to go with the rest of the meal. And so we went into the store, we got our thing, 
we went up to the register and the cashier just looked us looked at us and said y'all have been grilling haven't you i guess she could smell the smoke off of our clothes and she was like y'all have been grilling haven't you and we said yeah and we we went back home and finished doing what we're doing but what i got from that was does your life have enough fire where folks can smell the smoke, <laughs> right? Uh, are, are you just like kindling just a little bit, but there's no real activity? Or can folks smell the smoke from what you've been doing? And Valencia, I can smell the smoke <laughs> from how you are living your life. And um, that's why for me personally, um, uh, my, I'm gonna, my word for 2021 that I'm gonna get started on, I'm getting started on right now. That word is intensity. Intensity is my word for 2021. And I, I definitely was reminded uh, of that from this conversation. And I wanna thank you for that, uh, Valencia. My name is Galen Bingham. Uh, I'm the leadership strategist. And you can find me uh, at Galen uh, at killglobalcoaching.com. Uh, I help leaders bake permanent success into their life and work, and uh, I would love to do that with you uh, if there is something that you are tired of doing over and over again and you want to make that success permanent, I double-dog dare you to give me a call. Uh, this has been a great conversation with Valencia Gibbs, and uh, we have walked through the chapter on the brain, the 12th element of Think and Grow Rich. We do this every week, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays. Uh, and I hope that you will join us again. And in the meantime, <laughs> in between time, please think and grow rich. Until next time, take care.